Sure. Harmon's with her. God forgive me. Wickedness. at once her chappy finger laying upon her skinny lip. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee. Uh, thank you, lad. Thank, thank you. Order. All hail, Macbeth. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Coppins. Thou shalt be king. Wicked. Wickedness. Oh, God, forgive me. Perhaps somebody could watch out for the ambulance. Tuck it in. Mrs. Davis. Delafontaine. Mrs. Davis. It's Father Gorman. Oh, there is much time. Wickedness. Such wickedness. I can't die like this. I must confess. It must be stopped. I'll do everything that's necessary. Uh. Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? The ambulance is here. Now or the one half world, nature seems dead. And wicked dreams abuse the curtained sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings. And withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now sits with it, whilst I threat he lives. Is it from a secret admirer? Hardly. Father Gorman's a man of the cloth, dear. So I hardly think it. Then the following for safekeeping. How very strange. What's Rev 6 8, miss? It isn't done to read other people's correspondence, you know. No, miss. But what's it mean? Well, it's the Book of Revelation, uh, chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. Don't like the sound of that. Well, it's the Bible, dear. I'm not sure you're meant to. Oh, good morning, miss. Thank you, Billy, dear. Be right. That must be a mistake. Miss? What have is the matter? Well, it's Father Gorman, the man who just wrote to me. He's been murdered. Inspector Lejeune, I've unseamed your padre for you, from knave to chops. Father Gorman. And? Well and truly coshed. 
first blow probably killed him, but whoever did it made sure. Nasty business. Nastier than you'd expect for robbery, Dr. Kerrigan? Was it robbery? Well, his pockets were turned out and the lining of his cassock ripped. Well, they couldn't have hoped for much. Parish priest, in my experience, usually poor as... Quite. But they battered his head in to make sure one would like to know why. Anyone come forward? Yes, as it happens, just about to take a statement. Dear Jane, I send the following for safekeeping. Ormerod Sanford Parkinson Hesketh Dubois Shaw Harmonsworth Tuckerton Corrigan Delafontaine Revelation 6-8 will telephone tomorrow evening and explain yours affectionately Patrick Gorman What do you make of it? Apart from the biblical reference I'm not quite sure what to make of it yet The names don't mean anything to you? I'm afraid not if I might ask how you knew Father Gorman. We met um, during the Great War at a convalescent home where I was nursing sister. He served as chaplain with the 7th Royal Irish Horse. Brave chap. Yes, he was. And when did you see him last? Oh, not for some years, but uh, kept in regular touch. And why do you think he would send this to you? Perhaps he thought someone may wish to take it from him. A list of meaningless surnames? They meant something to Father Gorman. And presumably to someone else. The newspaper said that uh, he'd been called out to attend a dying woman shortly before he was attacked. Mrs Davis, that's right. Yeah. You questioned her neighbours, presumably? Her fellow tenants, yes. 23 Bentall Street is a lodging house run by a woman called Coppins. It's just that... I know from my own experience that people don't always realise the, the value of, of what they have seen. We have done this sort of thing before, Miss Marple. Of course, forgive me. It's just, um... Father Gorman was such a good man. It's hard to imagine why anyone would want to hurt him. I don't know. Things have changed, Miss Marple. Goodness doesn't seem to count for very much anymore. It's an unforgiving world. And the city is a long way from country life. Of course, it is possible, isn't it, that the dying woman told him something. Um, perhaps he had to get those names down on paper as soon as he could before he forgot them. Well, anything's possible, of course. It's what makes my job so interesting. I'm sorry to have put you to any bother. No bother at all. Very public-spirited of you to come forward. Father Gorman was a good friend. He should have justice. He will. I promise. We'll find them. Meantime, try not to trouble yourself. No. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. The officer said Paddington Station, ma'am. Uh, yes, thank you. Driver. She was all right Monday week. She was all right when the gas man come on the Tuesday. She was all right on wash day. Then, that's right, she come down with the flu. I told her to rest up. Well, she would go out. It settled on her lungs. Well, what did she do, Mrs Davis? Oh, till about a month ago, I think it was customer relations. Or research. Not oh, some such. Had she been with you long, Mrs. Davis? About six months. Paid her rent regular. Seemed like a nice, quiet, respectable person. Though what more I can tell you, I'm sure I don't know. Not that I wouldn't be willing to help if I could. Oh, well, thank you, but I, I do need help. Oh, women know, they feel instinctively so much more than a man can know. Don't you think? When you brought Father Gorman to her, was there anything they said that was perhaps odd to you? Not odd so much as... 
I heard her say something about wickedness. Wickedness? Did she? Yes. Well, they have to confess, don't they? Romans, before they die. So I suppose that was it. Was she an unhappy woman, do you think? Well, I wouldn't say so. Business-like she was, methodical. No, nothing worrying her that you knew of? No. 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 But there was that one time, well, about a month ago, she was in the hall by the mirror putting a coat on for work. If things aren't all they should be, it's better not to know. Don't you agree? I'm sure that's right, dear. Everything I've done has always been perfectly straightforward. I have nothing to reproach myself with. What do you think she meant? I've no idea. It struck me at the time as being a queer thing to say. But people do come out with them. Oh, yes. Yes, they do. Mr. Osborne? Yes? Jane Marple, I wonder if I might bother you for a moment. Mrs. Coppin said that you were waiting in the street for the ambulance that attended to Mrs. Davis. That's right. Jolly cold it was, too. Uh, were you a friend of Mrs. Davis? Oh, thank you. Uh, no, uh, Father Gorman. The priest who... Oh, I see. It's, yes, of course. My condolences. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I wondered, uh, perhaps, had you seen anyone loitering about, watching the house? Well, I, I did see someone. Oh? He was tall, uh, about 50-ish, uh, wore his hair rather long underneath his trilby. Oh, he had a sort of a half-moon scar about here. Oh, yes. He struck a match, you see, to light a cigarette. That's when I noticed it. Uh, what was he doing? Just standing on a corner, smoking. Uh. Then the ambulance arrived, and I'm afraid I got rather caught up in all that. Did you tell the police? I did mention it to the constable. Not that he paid it much mind. They seem to think it's a straightforward case, Father Gorman. Robbery. Yes, yes, they do, don't they? You don't? Well, you see, on the night he died, Father Gorman sent me a letter. He did? Just a list of names for the most part. Uh, well, I, I shan't keep you any anymore, Mr. Osborne. I've disturbed you enough as it is. Oh, hardly. No, I'm just typing up my sales report for the office. Oh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Osborne, thank you. Oh, not at all. If there's anything else I can do. Oh, you know, as a matter of fact, I rather think there is. Ormrod, Sanford, plenty of those. Parkinson, not uncommon. Hesketh Dubois, that's a bit of a mouthful. Can't be many of them. Hesketh, Hesketh, Hesketh. Ah, here we are. Hesketh Dubois. Lady, no less. Only one in the book. Outside line, please. Uh, Grosvenor 6457. Engaged. Oh, good afternoon. Is that Lady Hesketh Dubois' house? Yes. Uh, may I speak with her, please? Lady Hesketh Dubois passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. When was that? Six months ago. Earlier this year. Oh, well. Um, uh, to, to whom am I speaking, please? Um, this is Mr. Mark Easterbrook. I, I wonder, could you tell me, do you remember her ever mentioning a place called the Pale Horse in Much Deeping? Not to my knowledge, no. No, no, I, I see. Well, I'm so sorry to have troubled you. Thank you very much. Bye. 
it's such a desolate spot. I shouldn't have brought you here. I asked you to. All the same. No, uh, thank you for coming with me. I, I don't think I should have had the, the courage to come here on my own. Somehow I doubt that. You seem quite brave indeed. I don't know about brave, but one must face things as they are. The truth, however awful, can never be as bad as <laughs> one's imaginings. Well, I suppose not. Do you know her well, Mrs. Davis? Only to nod to her in the hall, I'm afraid. She seemed perfectly nice, though. What makes you ask? I just wondered if you'd ever heard her mention the pale horse. A pale horse? No, no, I don't think I... No, not a pale horse, the pale horse. Can't say as I did. What is it? Well, I believe that um, it's a little hotel or inn of some kind in a little village called Much Deeping in, in Hampshire. Staying with us long, Miss uh, Marple? A few days, I think, Miss Stamford is. You're down for the burning, are you? The, the burning. Well, each year the village celebrates the witch trials, 1664. It does tend to draw the crowds. Ghouls. I can't say I approve, but it helps keep us afloat. Those are grey. Proprietrix of the pale horse. Jane Marple, how do you do? Room five, please, Sybil. Bella will take your luggage. Oh, good afternoon, Captain Cottam. Afternoon. Mrs. Cottam, settling in comfortably, I hope. Oh, yes, yes, quite comfortably, thank you. Um, your cleaner, Bella, isn't it? Well, she came in yesterday. To do the room? Yes. Well, we had the do not disturb sign on the door, and my husband likes to take a nap between two and four, so if you could... I'll speak to her about it, of course. Thank you. See, we only have to ask. Um, Captain and Mrs. Cotter are local residents. Rather awfully, they had a fire last week. Oh, dear. Yes, I see. How unfortunate. Yes. So they're staying here with their housekeeper, Mrs. Harsnett, until their place is repaired. Mm -hmm. We're giving them a rate, of course. Right. Mr. Easterbrook? Yes? Lejeune, sir. Frank Lejeune. 617 Squadron. Lejeune? <laughs> well, I never. Hello, old man. How are you? Very well, thank you. Well, well, well. Good old Frank. So, uh, what are you up to these days? Oh, I'm a police inspector. Heavens, there's a thing for my sins. Well, other people's, sure. <laughs> as often as not. I read your articles now and again. Oh, do you? I enjoy them very much. That's, that's good of you to say so. Probably too late to say now, but I was very sorry about your wife. Thanks, that was... Uh... So, uh, what brings you down here? Well, I was hoping to have a quick word with Lady Hesketh Dubois. She does live here. She did? Why? W what's all this about? Just following a lead. Well, I'm sure I can tell you what you need to know. She was my godmother. Was? Yes, she died quite recently. Is something wrong? That's what I'm hoping to find out. Why 
brings you to much steeping, Miss Marple. Outside of the burning, I'm afraid we have very few visitors these days. Still really? It was different in the old days. There was a regular clientele, commercial travellers and the like, but since the bypass went through, I'm afraid we've become something of a backwater. Oh, indeed, that is a shame. Oh, but how did I? Um, well, it, actually, the pale horse was a recommendation. Indeed. Might I ask from whom? <laughs> you might ask. As you wish. Oh, no, please, no, 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 nothing, nothing mysterious at all. It's just a um, friend of a friend. I'm afraid when you get to my age, um, names are quite hard to place, Miss Gray. <laughs> of course. And it's Mrs. Gray. Uh, at least it was. He died. Oh, I'm very sorry. Oh, well. Now, the first sitting for supper is usually at 7.30, though with the burning... This evening we're laying on a running buffet from seven in the lounge. I see. It's tonight, then, is it? The burning? It is. If there's anything else you require, anything at all, the telephone will connect you with reception. In the meantime, I hope you have a very pleasant stay. Oh, I shall. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Seriously, Lejeune, do you really think this has a bearing on the death of Father Gorman? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Supposing that's the connection. What? You mean they're all dead? Mm. Shaw, Harmonsworth, Tuckerton. Let us take a few moments to remember Thomasina Tuckerton. And this is none of your business. Mrs. Tuckerton! Oh, Miss Marple, what can I do for you? Well, I thought it would be useful to your inquiry to know that Lady Hesketh Dubois, one of the names on Father Gorman's list, died six months ago. Of an inflammation of the brain. Oh, you know them? Yes, I know. Rather more to the point, how do you? How do I? Um, oh, I telephoned her house yesterday and I spoke to a man called Mr. Easterbrook. Mark Easterbrook, her godson. Oh, you've seen him then? Yes, I've seen him. I know him, actually. Well, knew him. He was one of the best. Flew lanks during the war, which is how we met. I was ground crew, you see. He's a historian now. English folklore. Is he? Oh, is he now? Miss Marple, I understand that Father Gorman was a friend, but this is... A police matter. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Inspector. It's just... She was a woman of means, I could imagine. Considerable means. Now, really, I must get on and please... If there are any further developments, I will let you know. something I can help you with? 
I was just wondering how busy you were in the spring. You were thinking of coming back so soon? Well, it is such a lovely spot, even at this time of year. Oh, we like it. Yes. Have you been here long, Miss Stamfordus? Yes, we've been here seven, no, eight years. Thursday and I bought the freehold in April, 47. We'd seen it the previous year on a walking tour. Really, did you? But at the time, it wasn't for sale. Do you think it would be beyond the realms of possibility that I might get a drink? Is Mrs Gray not in the bar? Not unless you've cast an invisibility spell on her. Apologies. Hello. Uh, need some help? Is this way too much steeping? I, I, I hope so, Miss... Um... Corrigan. Ginger Corrigan. Mark Easterbrook. I need to get to the Pale Horse. Me too. Would you care for a lift? Uh, yes. I'm afraid Mr. Venables can be something of a tartar if he doesn't get what he wants exactly when he wants it. Oh. I expect it's on account of his polio. Something I can get you. Yes, a black currant cord. It will be nice. Thank you. Damn it, Cotton! I've warned you before about your bloody animal. Oh, it's steady on. Good dog shot. I tell you, if I see it sniffing around my place again, I won't be responsible. Like you wouldn't be responsible for the fire at my house. What the bloody hell are you talking about? I'm not going to sell, I told you, no matter what tricks you get up to. What are you talking Come about? On, you just... might have money, Venables. And good luck to you, but it doesn't mean you're going to have any damn thing you want. All I'm saying is I wish you'd keep your bloody dog under control. Stupid bitch is a menace. Look, I know you've had a few, but would you mind watching your language in front of my wife? My apologies. Quite. Mrs. Harsnett not joining you for a constitutional today? Sorry. Never a dull moment. <laughs> oh, you were going to tell me about how you and Mrs. Gray came to the Pale Horse. It was a bad winter. The village had been cut off by snow. And the landlord's wife... Yes. He'd been called to Market Basing, you see, the landlord. Had he? Yes, yes, I see. Found her at the bottom of the stairs. A fall, they said. Though I should think it was the cold that did for her in the end. How terrible. All that time in the dark and the pain. Well, a broken pelvis, you can imagine. And the cold seeping into her. But come the thaw, he put the place on the market. And here you are. Yes. Mr. Osborne? Yes? Uh, Jane Marple. Ah, oh, Miss Marple. You well? Yes, very well, thank you. It really is the most extraordinary place. Oh, did you find what you're looking for? No, no, no nothing yet. Um, but there is someone in the village I'd very much like you to see. Quite something, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Quite something. Mr... Uh, uh, Easterbrook. Uh, Mark Easterbrook. Jane Martel. How do you do? May I introduce Miss Corrigan? Ginger, hello. It's my first time on Much Deep Ink. Thrilling, isn't it? Uh, Rupert Cottam, how do you do? Hello, how do you do? My wife Kanga. How do you do? Uh, housekeeper, Lydia Harsnett. Hello, how do you do? Do you live in the village or are you just down for the burning? Uh, locals, albeit displaced ones. We had a fire last week, so we're billeted at the inn. Oh, poor you. How bloody. The wealthy widow! <laughs> Where are they? Yeah. 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 
Didn't quite catch what it is you do, Mr. Easterbrook. Oh, um, I'm, I'm a historian. I'm down here researching the, the witch trials, Wincanton, Stoke Trister, and so forth. Have you anything to say? I'm innocent. And we say to you... There's a brass in the church you might care to see, Mr. Easterbrook. Uh, paid for by the villagers in remembrance of Goody Carr. Uh, Mrs. Harden's late husband was vicar of our little parish, made something of a study of it all, I believe. Who's Goody Carr? Well, it's, it's Goody Carr, whose memory the villagers are honouring tonight. The witch. Uh, she was accused by the squire of having unnatural traffic with the devil. She was. Although, in truth, I think the squire was really after her land. She was tried, found guilty and hanged. From... From the old willow tree, over there. Burned to the stake, surely. Actually, Miss Corrigan, the vast majority of witches were hanged. And it wasn't the clean drop used nowadays, I can tell really, you. Really, room, must you? Don't know if you've ever seen anyone being throttled. Might be about to. Not a pretty sight, all I was going to say. Cripes. Well, people still say that good old Goody is making her way home at a cock stride. And that when she reaches the farm... The whole village will go up in flames. But to be honest, I've seen enough fire in the last two weeks to last me a lifetime. So. Same with you, I'd like to go inside or do something I regret. Now, who it was recommended the pale horse? A Miss Tuckerton, would it be? Mrs. Tuckerton? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sure that's what the name was. Ah. <laughs> well, good night then. Good night. Oh, uh, Miss Marple? Um, I wonder, um, I'm due to call on Roger Venables tomorrow for lunch. Perhaps you'd like to join me? Oh, Mr. Venables. Uh, <sighs> You'll be doing me a favour. He can be a crusty old devil. But my husband was fond of him, and I'm, I'm trying to carry on his good work. Make him part of our little community, as it were. Oh, in that case, yes, of course, I'll be delighted. Hurrah! <laughs> I'd be grateful if you didn't mention it to Rue, uh, uh, Captain and, and Mrs. Cotton. They don't really get on with Mr. Venables. Oh, so I gather... They wouldn't really like it if they thought I'd been fraternising. Of course, of course. Good night, then. <laughs> Mrs. Gray. Uh, I think perhaps you have some gift for clairvoyance. Oh, no, no, nothing so exotic, I'm afraid. Just a clean sense of smell. Well, unless I'm much mistaken, that's Odin and Louis you're wearing. I hope you'll forgive me, but I had the idea, Bella had it too, that you might need us. Need you, Mrs. Scrape? Sybil thinks you came here to find us. She's seldom at fault. And why would I want to find you? That I do not know yet. But I shall rely on it. Oh, 
last night at the burning, you're sure it was him, Mr. Venables? Yes, well, heaven knows what he's done to himself since. Oh, the wheelchair, huh? You know, from all I can gather, he's been unable to walk for some years. Really? You sure? I could have sworn that was the man I saw. Could you have been mistaken, perhaps? I could have. It's possible. Unless he has a twin brother. Now, that would be an answer. <laughs> in fiction, perhaps. But it, in real life, it doesn't happen. You know, it really doesn't. No. I expect not. I'm sorry. I, I can't help but feel like I've wasted your time. Oh, no. Please, don't think that. Not at all. Your father, Gorman. Someone should answer for it. They will. And I think it's possible that Mrs. Davis may have visited the Pale Horse. And what makes you think that? I found a list of names which matched those sent to me by Father Gorman. <laughs> Concealed in one of Mrs. Davis's shoes of all places. Miss Marple, that's evidence. Oh, it is, Inspector. But more importantly, that list was written on headed notepaper from the Pale Horse. Please, don't tell me you have taken it upon yourself to go down there. I'm afraid that would be an untruth. Oh. But you see, the names on Mrs. Davis's list have dates beside them which match certain entries in the hotel register. Do they? Well, I certainly think you might be onto something. Oh, do you think so? I do, but, but please, do nothing further. Well, I, I'm sorry, Inspector, it's a very bad line. I, I, I didn't quite catch that. Oh, well, there go the papers. I haven't any more money to put in. Oh. Good morning. That's just gone. Ringworm. Oh. Frightfully catching. You don't want the other dogs getting it. Oh, no. Or yourself. This wretched stuff makes the fur fall out. Leaves a bear patch for a bit. But it'll soon grow back. Won't it, old dog? Yet? Ready for the off? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. I'm going to show Miss Marple around the church. Ah, very nice, too. Yes. Oh. Have you worked long for Captain Cottle? Two years, nearly. After my husband died... They were kind enough to offer me a position. Your husband was vicar here, I understand. Yes, yes, he was. Yes, Philip had been a missionary, you see, in West Africa. Malaria. Weakened his heart, I think. Over the years, last attack. Wasn't strong enough to... No, no. I am sorry. I hope you don't mind, but I've asked Miss Corrigan to join oh. us. <laughs> no, not at all. Good morning, Miss Corrigan. Oh, do call me Ginger. Everyone does. Good Lord, Mr Venables must be rolling in money. Yes, and no one really knows where it came from. He's quite the mystery man. Travelled the world, you know. So, it seems a supreme irony that I should have emerged unscathed from some of the most disease-ridden corners of the globe only to contract polio in my own rather dull little country. Eastbourne Lido, 1949. God rot the place and all who live there. Tell me, Mr Venables... Why did you come to live in much deeping, so far away from everything? Do you have friends here? No. I came to this part of the world precisely because I knew no one here. Did you? Yes, well, I see. Yet for all that, I find I'm now on the tourist trail, a site of historic local interest, along with the burning and those monsters up at the Pale Horse. Monsters, Mr. Venables? <laughs> you know what they say, two's company, three's a coven. Seems a little harsh. I know that Sambus finds them useful, Mrs. Harsnett, but in my opinion, they should be driven out with pitchforks and burning brands, if needs be. What they're up to in that place... What are they up to? Wickedness. All manner of black devilry. Of course, I was brought up with the devil. Believing in him, I mean. And, you know, he always did seem to me so silly. With hooves and a tail. <laughs> Capering about like a ham actor. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned, but I really can't go along with this modern playing down of evil as something that doesn't really exist. Wouldn't you agree, Miss Marple? Oh, yes, yes, indeed I do. And evil is powerful, sometimes more powerful than good. It's there. It, uh, it needs to be recognised and fought. Fought, Miss Marple. Otherwise, we go down to darkness. Last night, Miss Marple, did I hear you right? What's that, dear? You told Mrs. Gray you knew Mrs. Tuckerton. 
wouldn't be an Amelia Tucker to would it? Stepdaughter by the name of Thomasina. Possibly, as I say, she's just a friend of a friend. Why? I worked with a girl at the gallery called Thomasina Tuckerton. Tommy Tucker, we called her. Oh, well, it might be. Very well might be. You must ask her. No, that's impossible, I'm afraid. Tommy died two weeks ago. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. And only a few weeks before, she'd been so happy. John had asked her to marry him. And she'd accepted him, yes. I see. We thought it must be some sort of nervous alopecia, but she just got weaker. What did the doctors diagnose? They didn't know. She was just so alone. Her stepmother was on a cruise, so there was only me and John to look after her. And then, in the end, only me. She didn't want John to see her like that. Where's her father? Oh, he died himself less than a year ago, not long after Tommy's 19th. I finally ran her stepmother to ground in Rio. It was all I could do to persuade her to come back for the funeral. There was bad blood between them. She said John was only after Tommy's money. She was a wealthy girl. Well, she would have been. Her father left her a fortune to be held in trust until Tommy was 21. Or, or until she married. It's, that is so often the way. It goes now, I suppose, to the stepmother. Yes. Yes. That too is so often the way. There you are. I was wondering where you'd gotten to. Why? What's to do? Well, Mrs. Gray's showing Mr. Easterbrook some of her books, and as a consequence, we've been invited to tea in her sanctum sanctorum. Apparently, it's in the old courthouse where Goody Khan was tried. Goodness, what a lot of poetry you keep. Can't say I care for hands. Mostly cockles, they be. Table birds? Them's useful to us. Mm, whatever they are, I don't like them. Damn things look at you as if they know what you're thinking. Perhaps they do, Mrs. Cotton. I mean, this is interesting. Oh. oh. Yes, this is powerful. Honestly, Thurza, I do wish sometimes you'd knock. I'm surprised you didn't divine my presence, Sybil, dear. Uh, Mrs. Gray, you, you really do have some wonders here. An original Malleus Maleficorum and this. Grimoire Sadochismus Triumphatus. Very rare indeed. Oh, it's so nice to meet someone who admires one's treasures. So the three G seances, then, is it? Ah, oh, that plain and forthright voice which the Antipodes is so rightly renowned. You're well informed, Mrs. Cotton. Someone must have been talking. In a village, I find everyone knows one's business far better than one does oneself. I'm sure the three of us enjoy a splendid, sinister reputation. And all you want. Yes, thank you, Bella. That'll be all. Give it here. I'm sure someone will have told you. Bella is the local witch. Really? Yes, she has certain powers, though not as great as those that Sybil enjoys. Well, I have always been attracted to the occult. Even as a child, I realised I had unusual powers. Did you? Really? Oh. Automatic writing came quite naturally to me. I didn't even know what it was. I'd just sit there with a pencil in my hand. Not of a clue what was happening. Automatic writing. Now, the difference between that and mindless scribbling is... Uh... Interpretation. Ah, oh, yes, yes, of course. You don't believe any of this, do you, Miss Marple? But you do, don't you? I don't believe, Miss Marple. I know. Why else have people come through the ages to the necromancer and the witch doctor? There are only two things people want badly enough to risk damnation. The love potion and the cup of death. Ah. So simple, isn't it? Love and death. The love potion to win the man you want. A draft to be taken at the full of the moon. Recite the names of the devils. Draw patterns on the floor. All window dressing. The truth, of course. The aphrodisiac in the draft. And the cup of death. Untraceable poisons, perhaps. Poisons, childish stuff. There are new horizons, Miss Marple. The mind. 
knowledge of what it can do and what it can be made to do. Made to do? Influence your subject to commit suicide, is that it? No. The psychologists have shown us the way. The desire for death. It's there in everyone. And that desire can be stimulated. You don't need to kill your victim. All you need to do is will him to death. Can you do it? What is it? Lejeune, what are you doing here? With you in a moment. When I got back from lunch with Mr. Venables, Rue had... Oh. Captain Cottom had already retired. It was his custom to take a siesta at that time of an afternoon. I, um, I took him a cup of tea at four o'clock. Yes, yes, around then. And, um... That's, that's what I found. Rupert was in the garden with the dog. That was the last I saw him. He was so full of life. We were so happy. And I wasn't even there. I wasn't there. Hello. Oh, hello. Thought you might like this. Oh, thank you. You've been seen? Yes. Though what the police think, I can tell them. There's no suggestion that there are any suspicious circumstances. Not so far as I know. I've been meaning to ask. How was it you heard about the pale horse? It's my field. English folklore. Yes, of course. What's your interest? Oh, just that old curiosity. I'm not sure I believe that for a moment. In fact, you strike me as the sort of young woman who's never had an idle thought in her head. I'll take that as a compliment. You should. I, uh... I thought it best we meet somewhere where we could talk in private. Now, I've asked the local pathologist to pass his findings on, but first impressions are Captain Cotton died of natural causes. Natural causes? His heart. It would appear he'd been exerting himself after a fashion. I understood he'd gone for an afternoon nap. It's possible he may not have been having 40 winks by himself. Oh, oh if yes, well, I, I, I see. I must say, I, I thought there was rather more to their arrangements than simple housekeeping. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Cotton, party to it, would you think? I would think so, wouldn't you? Goes on, Miss Marple. You only have to read the Sunday papers. Mm. But it doesn't mean there's anything sinister about it. Mm. Look, I'm sorry, I know you've the best of intentions, but the long and the short of it is... I can't go poking my big London nose into Hampshire police business because you've got a feeling it isn't done. No, no, of course. Mind you, could have knocked me down with a feather running into Mark Easterbrook again so soon. I'll admit it's a rum go finding him down here. Not that I'm suggesting he was involved with what happened to Father Gorman in any way. No, no, of course not. But it is a long while since you've seen him. The man you knew... I... He does seem changed. But he's more cause than most. Maybe since Isla? His wife. Whirlwind romance, head over heels. Whisked her off to Italy for a honeymoon, a Amalfi Coast. Car accident. Brakes failed. She was killed outright. 
I imagine Mr. Easterbrook was lucky to survive. She was with a friend. Ah. Local police tried to pin it on Mark, of course, jealousy, but it didn't stick. Anything in it? I'd have sworn not, but... <sighs> Given the right circumstances, who knows what a chap might do. Tell me, Inspector, have you ever heard of a physician called Sir William Dugdale of Harley Street? He's a nerve doctor, isn't he? So I believe. Yes, we use him sometimes if one of our men goes down with a bad case of the jitters. Why? What about him? Perhaps you might like to ask him about one of his patients, the name of Venables. Prize court. Much deeping. Goodbye, Miss Marple. Goodbye. Miss Marple. Oh, Miss Corrigan. You said evil had to be fought. Otherwise, we'd go down to darkness. Did you mean it? Every word. Is there something you'd like to tell me, perhaps? Yes. About your friend, is it? Tommy Tuckerton. You're worried that her death was perhaps not entirely a natural one. C.R. Bradley. I found it at Tommy Tuckerton's house. Her stepmother had it. That's what led me here. Charing Cross 6502. Have you tried to contact Mr. Bradley? I'm ashamed to say I was afraid to, on my own. Well, there's two of us, Mel. Two of us? Yes, you see, I too lost a, a friend, a very dear friend. His name was Father Gorman. And somehow the pale horse, perhaps with the help of Mr. Bradley, is at the heart of it. And now with Captain Cottam's murder. Murder? I thought a heart seizure. Oh, no, my dear. He was murdered, I'm quite sure of it. But why and by whom? We'll get to the bottom of it. I know we will. Oh, yes. But we must beware. For even while we are hunting him, I fear he may well be hunting us. Please be careful, Miss Marple. Don't worry. I'll be back from London tomorrow. See you then. Dear lady, how may one be of service? Oh, uh, thank you. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure how this is meant to work, Mr. Bradley. I suppose the first thing to ask is, uh, how much? <laughs> dear me, I see. Yes. That's not how we go about things, dear me, no. no. no we haven't introduced ourselves yet, have we? But I, I don't think I ought to give you my name. Oh, cautious. Yes, I like that. Yes, admirable quality, but... <laughs> I think we may allow ourselves a moment's candor. Who is it sent you to me? Let's just say uh, a friend of mine has a friend who has a friend. Quite. You know my calling, I presume. Turf Commission agent. Interested in horses, ma'am? Betty? Any particular horse you had in mind? A pale horse? <laughs> Good, excellent. Oh, you yourself, if I may say so, uh, seem to be rather a dark horse. <laughs> Let me assure you that it's, there's no need for any anxiety. I'm a lawyer myself. Disbarred, I understand. Unfairly, of course. Just so. But disbarred or not, I do know my law. And everything I recommend here is perfectly legal. It's a question of a bet, you see. A bet? That's right. A man, or in your case, Mutatis Mutandis, a woman, can bet on anything he pleases. Whether it will rain tomorrow, whether the Russians can send a man to the moon, or whether Mrs. X will die before Christmas. You follow? Look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I keep thinking I saw you at Kensal Green Cemetery the other day. Uh... You did. I would have mentioned it myself, but um, running into you again, I didn't want you to get the idea I was um, some kind of odd, you know, um, following you. What or... were you doing? I was visiting my late godmother, Min, 
know, more properly, uh, Lady Minerva Hesketh Dubois. She died earlier this year. Let's assume a hypothetical case. Someone would like to know when Great Aunt Eliza is going to die. Eliza could live on, pepped up by doctors for another ten years. Would you be delighted, of course? You're fond of the old girl, but how useful would it be to know? You follow? Oh, yes. And that's when yours truly comes in. You bet me a certain sum that Aunt Eliza will be hale and hearty until Christmas. I bet that she won't. There's nothing against that, is there? She was a decent old stick. Good innings, mind. 71. But she went through it, poor thing. I mean, it was quick, quick as you like, but all over in a week. You wouldn't let a dog suffer like that. She wasted away to skin and bone. Her hair. Her hair? Well, just came out. Clumps. With indignity. You know? For a woman especially, crowning glory, when all said and done. No matter how old you are. You were fond of her? Yes. Yes, I suppose I was, rather. She was always there when things got bad. Did they get bad often? Once. Very. Draw up a contract, sign it. I give you a date. I say that a fortnight from that date, Aunt Eliza's funeral service will be read. You say it won't. Supposing you lose? Well, I pay up. Naturally. And if you lose... Supposing I don't pay up? I really shouldn't advise her. I'd like to think about it. Of course. Of course, by all means, yes. Never rush into anything. No, no. No, if you decide to do business, you come back and we'll go into the matter more fully. No hurry in the world. No hurry at all. No. Thank you. Where does the pale horse fit in? More things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in you. <laughs> don't ask me how they do it. I don't know. But rest assured. Whatever it is they do do, it works. Bradley, eh? I should have known. Caused us no end of trouble over the years. But he's a slippery customer. Knows every legal dodge in the book, somehow always stays just the right side of the line. But we were talking about murder, organised murder. And that's partly what I can't square. Bradley's a wrong un, but something like that. Chance of having his neck stretched. I'd have said that was right off his beat. Yes, I agree with you, Inspector. Mr Bradley's involvement begins and ends with the financial transaction. He's a go-between, nothing more. Oh, and I did hear back from Sir William Dugdale, the nerve chap you asked me to get hold of. No go, I'm afraid. Venables has as much chance of walking as I ever flying. You know, Inspector, despite all the evidence to the contrary, I think it would still be worth one's while to keep an eye on Mr Venables. Really? Oh, yes, yes, I would go so far as to say he may well be key to unwrapping this whole affair. There are dark forces at work here, Inspector. They must be forced into the light. Somehow I don't like the sound of that. Whatever suspicions you may have, you must leave things to the police and not take any action of your own. No, no, of course, Inspector. No, you're right. I, well, I wouldn't dream. Dear me, no. According to the tale I put on Bradley, he left yesterday in his lunch hour to deliver a letter to an office on the other side of town. And the place looked derelict, but we've run it down. Registered offices of customer reactions classified. Some sort of market research outfit. The registrar of companies lists the director as an Ian Morris Noon, with an E. Oh, 
Well, it would be, wouldn't it? I mean, it's a front, obviously. But Ian Morris Noon. I am Noon. I am no one. Or I'm number one, both, probably. Hmm. Well, a man's got a sense of humour, then. <laughs> and it would seem to confirm your instinct that Bradley's just the middleman. Uh, forgive me, but wasn't there some mention of consumer reactions uh, with regard to Mrs. Davis? Yes, but the neighbours say that no one's been near nor by the office in months. Mm. You really think that Pale Horse is connected? Don't you? It's a big jump from putting on scare shows for the gullible to actual murder. All these people who died, presumably somebody profited by their deaths. Oh, yes. Uh, Lady Hesketh Dubois left about 50,000. Niece and nephew inherit. Both could do with the money, but both were abroad when she fell ill. Thomasina Tuckerton, her father left a very large fortune, but since she died unmarried before the age of 21... It reverts to her stepmother. And it's pretty much the same story with the whole list. Yes. I think it's time we spoke to Miss Corrigan. Why? Heavens, what are you doing here? Fred have been called back to work. An emergency at the gallery. Oh, I am sorry. I shall be sad to see you go. Your bill, Miss Corrigan. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Gray, I wonder, could you do me a favour? While packing, I noticed I seem to have misplaced the glove. Brown suede, the left. If you should. I'll have... send it on to you. Well. <sighs> goodbye then. Bye bye. Goodbye. Safe journey. Oh. Miss Marple. Well, well, well. Now, try not to worry. These things happen. Play fair, well, you're not really left with much of an alternative, are you? Obviously, with the time factor, that will have to be reflected in the size of the bed, but uh, you just leave that with me. Hmm? Thank you. No, thank you. The pale horse? I've had the preliminary findings on Captain Cotton through. Doesn't look to have been a heart attack after all. The pathologist says he's never seen anything like Cotton's insides. It looked as though he drunk about a gallon of drain cleaner. Morning. Morning. Oh, great heavens. Of course. Yes. Oh. Now I see. Once the invocation is completed, there can be no going back. Death will have its dominion. You are resolved. Very well.
You have brought what you were instructed to bring? Ah, uh, yes. It belongs... No, no. No names. Oh, yes. This is most suitable. The physical emanations of its wearer are very strong. Sybil, we're ready for you. I must impress upon you the necessity of remaining absolutely still. I am summoning forces into this room dangerous to those who do not know how to control them. I am here. Is that you, Mackendall? I am Mackendall. Are you prepared, Mackendall, to submit to my desire? I am. The dead must be sent to cause death. It shall be so. Paul. Paul. Oh. Well, did you get a look at his legs? No, no, I didn't, but I think I know how he's been doing it. You do? Yes. Let's, let's just watch for a while. Maravors, Eri, which wert in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, which wert in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Maravors, thy dawn, Eri, Luscaris, Eri, Maravors, Eri, which wert in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are set free. To be at one with the owner of this glove. Only death solves all problems. Only death. There is always a weak spot. The tissues of the body obey the mind. The tissues. The flesh. Towards death. Towards death. Death the conqueror. Death. Strength. Death the conqueror. Very, very soon. Death. Death! 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 What if he had a twin brother, you said? Rather foolishly, and to my everlasting shame, I dismissed it as belonging to fiction. But you got me thinking. After all, what better cover for a murderer than a man confined to a wheelchair? I don't understand. How did he manage to fool the doctors? I mean, he really does have a twin. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. But just suppose uh, Mr. Venables had made contact with a, a, a genuine polio case. Uh, someone in poor circumstances to whom he made a proposition. Look. Oh, look, look. Look. Just as I thought. Well, well. Brilliant, Miss Ma. You see? It's the genuine sufferer passing himself off as Mr. Venables, who visits the Harley Street specialist to be examined. And there you are. As far as the world is concerned, Mr. Venables is a hopeless invalid. While in truth, he's able to come and go as he pleases. I thought that'd be an answer of some sort, but... Do you think it's enough? I, I mean, it, it's just my word. Well, we'll have to see what Inspector Lejeune says, but... I suspect we may yet have to make a little magic of our own in order to expose him.
me a moment. Oof. Yeah. Oh, oh. I must be molting. <laughs> Are you sure you're up to this, Miss Marple? Well, you know, I think I might be coming down with a cold, but I'm not going to let it stand in my way. <laughs> yeah. Now, are we for the offer? Inspector, I think I'd like to know what the hell is going on. You come in here, you come and dear my hotel. It's a damned outrage. Actually, Mr. Venables, I believe there's a matter on which you might be able to assist us. Really? And what might that be? On the 5th of March, a parish priest by the name of Father Gorman was murdered in Westbourne Street, Paddington. Is that so? I must confess, now the moment's here, I'm more than a little nervous. I must admit, I'm somewhat apprehensive myself. My only regret is I wish I could be there to see the look on his face. Yes, but we must follow Inspector Lejeune's advice. You're our star witness. Only you can identify him. And if this is to work, we must time your entrance to maximum effect. You see, Father Gorman had been called out that particular evening to attend the deathbed of a Mrs. Davis. She had become unwittingly entangled in a criminal organisation which specialised in the removal of unwanted persons for a substantial fee. These removals were ostensibly brought about by what might be called psychological means. So the victim dies a perfectly natural death. Do you really believe that? The headquarters of this organisation is said to be a place called... The Pale Horse. Furza Gray's nonsense. You really believe she spouts some mumbo-jumbo and as a result, somebody dies? Oh no, Mr Venables. Uh, cause of death is uh, much simpler than that. Um, thallium poisoning. What did you say? Uh, uh, poisoning by thallium salts. Only the killer was at pains to disguise that fact. And what better method than a pseudo-scientific psychological setup, full of modern jargon and reinforced by all superstitions? Thallium salts is a. I don't think I've heard of that one. No, it's extensively used as rat poison, and more specifically for animals with ringworm. Odorless, tasteless, it's uh, obtained quite easily. In fact. I think that um, Inspector Lejeune retrieved a, a jar of it from your house only this morning. I know nothing about that. Nothing at all. Oh, your enterprise is very well organised, Mr Venables. Financial details arranged by a debarred solicitor named Bradley. Mr. Bradley has, a, has an office in town and prospective clients who want rid of a wealthy relative for their own gain visit him there and do business. Well, that is to say, there is a bet made on whether someone will die within a stated period. When Mr. Bradley wins his bet, the money has to be paid over quite promptly or um, something unpleasant is liable to happen. Uh, that's what Mr. Bradley has to do. Make a bet. Simple, isn't it? It would certainly seem so. Oh, it is so, Mr. Venables. For barring the depositing of certain monies, together with the name of the intended victim, to a certain address, that's the end of Mr. Bradley's role in the affair. Miss Mott. Thank you, Inspector. The client then comes here to the Pale Horse, where a show is put on by Mrs. Gray and her friends, which usually impresses in the way it's meant to. I hope you're not suggesting that I'm involved in all this. Oh, no, no, not at all. Well, not in the actual killing, although that's certainly the impression you like to give, Mrs. Gray, isn't it? Cat got your tongue, Mrs. Gray? I thought as much. For all that you enjoy letting people think you really do have power over life and death, like Bradley, your involvement was merely so much pantomime. Pantomime? Financially rewarding, no doubt, but pantomime, all the same. How dare you? Oh, I dare. You see, this whole rigmarole you lay on down here is simply part of the murderer's grand design. It's a failsafe. Like Bradley, another way of keeping the real killer at one removed from everybody else. And if anyone should go to the police with wild tales of murder being committed by black magic, well, 
We'd as soon phone the funny farm at Scotland Yard. You mean people really have died? Oh my God. We didn't know. Tell them, Furza. We didn't even know who it was we were meant to be cursing. Well, not their names. And there was never any money involved. Tell them, Furza. Oh, Tell for God's them. sake, Sybil. How else do you think we've kept afloat since the bypass went through? Do you think all of this just pays for itself? But I just thought it was a bit of fun. Fun, Miss Stamfordis. And now to the uh, simple facts behind the scenes, as it were. Certain women, uh, to the best of their knowledge, bona fide employees of a consumer research concern, are sent by the anonymous head of the enterprise to canvas a particular neighborhood with a questionnaire. What bread do you prefer? What toilet articles, cosmetics do you use? And so to the last step, the only action performed by the mysterious head of the enterprise himself. He may pose as a, a plumber, electrician, a, a workman of some kind in order to gain entry. Uh, but uh, whatever his role, his object is simple. Replacing an article he knows by means of the consumer research questionnaire that his victim uses with a poisoned substitute, which sooner or later does its deadly work. The victim falls ill, a doctor is called, but sees no reason to imagine anything untoward. You see, but for the hair loss, thallium poisoning looks like nothing more than a natural death. You see the beauty of this scheme, Mr. Venables? The only person who knows what the head of the organization actually does is the head of the organization himself. There is no one to give him away. No one to give him away? What utter... Tosh. What about Bradley? What about the witches? Neither Mr. Bradley nor anyone at the Pale Horse so much as even know his name, never mind what he looks like. You see, that's the key to the whole operation. Mr. Bradley is handsomely paid, of course, as is Mrs. Gray. But so far as the world is concerned, the man behind it doesn't even exist. So how do you know so much? There's nothing so reliable in court as the testimony of an eyewitness. For example, Mr. Venables, this gentleman here is willing to swear he saw you following Father Gorman on the night of the 5th of March. And I did see you. I described you exactly. Didn't I, Miss Marple? Yes, you did. Rather too exactly, perhaps. Because I'm afraid you didn't see Mr. Venables that night you were waiting for the ambulance. What? Let me introduce you, Mr. Venables, to Mr. Paul Osborne, late of Benthol Street, Paddington. You'll feel a personal interest in him when I tell you that Mr. Osborne, who, like yourself, has uh, been under observation by Inspector Lejeune for quite some time, was unwise enough to plant a jar of thallium salts in your house. Only this morning. No, I didn't. Be quiet. You see, not knowing of your condition, Mr. Osborne amused himself by casting you as the villain of the piece. That's Marple. And being a very greedy, as well as a very vain and very stupid young man, he refused to admit he'd made a mistake. Worse, he tried to implicate you further by murdering Rupert Cotton. Who should we look to if murder was suspected, other than the man with whom the late captain had such a long-standing and bitter feud? How do you suppose I managed to achieve that? You said yourself that's not how thallium works. Yes, but it wasn't thallium you used on poor Captain Cotton. Oh, no. Uh, in the kitchen, Inspector, you will find a jar of dried beetles, uh, Lighter Bissecatoria of the Melodi family, more commonly known, I believe, as Spanish fly. Crushed to a powder, and in the minutest doses, it has a reputation as a powerful aphrodisiac. Alas... The potion I saw Lydia Harsnett buy from Bella Ellis, as I believe was their long-standing arrangement, was of no such minute dose, but rather one that had been tampered with and prepared to a lethal strength, so that when Captain Cotton drank it voluntarily, his insides were burnt beyond saving. Thank <laughs> you.
Is that not the case, Mrs. Harsnett? Lydia? Kanga, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Rue insisted. We'd used it before. Well, you know we had. You. Wicked, wicked boy! How could you? Even then, one couldn't be sure that Paul Osborne was the brains behind it all. The mysterious head of the Enterprise. Not without saying how he was going about it. So, we asked Mr. Easterbrook to commission a little murder of our own. As Inspector Lejeune says, there's nothing so reliable as an eyewitness. Miss Corrigan? This brave girl put her life at risk. Is this the man who came to your door this morning to read the meter? Yes. That's a lie. It's her word against mine. You've not one whit of proof. Oh, we have. Officers were watching Miss Corrigan's flat. You were seen entering and leaving the building. You're lying! If that were the case, you would have arrested me there and then. And Miss giving you a chance to plant thallium salts at Mr. Venable's house? Miss Marple thought you might go for it. And you did. Hubris, Inspector. The arrogance of a murderer who's escaped justice for so long he thinks no one will ever catch him. You have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, perhaps you're right. Perhaps it was another Paul Osborne who was imprisoned at the age of 12 for murder, having poisoned his stepfather. Too young to hang, he was detained at His Majesty's pleasure and until he was deemed cured and ready for release. But <laughs> he was not cured, for there was nothing wrong with him in the first place, beyond a greed for money and a propensity for wickedness. And for that, I'm afraid, there is no cure. Save one. You dare! Call me stupid. <laughs> if you knew, if you had any idea what I've done. Oh, I know what you've done, Paul. You killed Father Gorman. And now I know why. Really? You killed him because you realised Mrs. Davis would have told him what she knew of the pale horse. And how do you imagine Mrs. Davis knew about the pale horse? Oh, I imagine it began with something as simple as recognising a client's name in the obituaries column. And once you've seen one, well, I suspect she followed Bradley back from one of his trips to the headquarters of customer reactions, consulted him, perhaps much the same as we did. And that's what led her here. And well, you couldn't have that. So you poisoned her. You suspected Mrs. Davis knew the names of all the people you had murdered. Well, you were right. She'd made a list. You think you know all, don't you? Oh, well, we'll see who has the last laugh. <laughs> You'll be sorry. I presume by that uh, you're referring to the pot of face cream I keep on the dresser. The one you laced with thallium? Well, fortunately for me, I'm rather set in my ways and I always keep the labels on my potions turned towards me. It's uh, so much quicker to see what you're looking for. But you're ill. As I said, I'm, I think I may well be coming down with a cold. Your hair. Window dressing, Mr. Osborne. As Mrs. Gray will confirm... The trick with magic is always to show the audience exactly what it is they expect to see. Hmm? Now you see it. Now you don't. You are an interfering old witch. You won't be killing anybody, not where you're going. Get him out! Sorry as he'll be, I fancy. My apologies, Miss Marple. No, no, Inspector. Not at all. Oh, you know, I rather think I'd, I'd like a brand. I'm astounded, Miss Marple. 
I had my mind firmly set on Mr. Venables. You might have given me a hint. Well, I couldn't afford to give any hints, I'm afraid. One has to play these things very close to one's chest. <laughs> In truth, we didn't have very much to go on, which is why we staged things the way we did, with Mr. Venables' cooperation, of course. Most fun I've had in years. We had to lead Osborne up the path, then turn on him suddenly and hope to break him down. Look, look, look! Oh. Just as I thought. And it worked. When did you begin to suspect him? Oh. Well, oh. it's extraordinarily difficult to make up a description of anybody. Try it. You'll find you're unconsciously describing someone you know or you've seen somewhere. I'd say Osborne saw Mr. Venable sitting in his car one day here in Much Deeping and was very struck by his appearance. But, of course, if he'd seen him that way, he wouldn't have known he was confined to a wheelchair. And what about Theresa Gray's part in all this? Sybil Stamfordis and Bella? I wouldn't worry too much about them, Mr. Venables. I shouldn't be surprised if some dark and moonless night they just mounted their broomsticks and slipped quietly away. <laughs> Cheers. Well, Miss Corrigan, <laughs> good to see you looking so well. Mm. Thank you for everything. If it hadn't been for you, no. it's Father Gorman we should thank and Mrs. Davis. They set the ball rolling. Paid for it with their lives. You gave her justice, Miss Marple, Mrs. Davis, and Tommy Tuckerton, Lady Hesketh Dubois, Father Gorman, all of them. We gave them justice. So thank you, both of you, for agreeing to take part in our little subterfuge. I hear Mr. Easterbrook played his part to perfection. According to Inspector Lejeune, Mr. Bradley still can't believe you were a stooge. He really did think you wanted me out of the way. Oh, I suspect, my dear, <laughs> that nothing can be further from the truth. Well, I'd, uh, I'd better be young. Series 1 to 4 of Agatha Christie's Marple, starring Geraldine McEwan and Julia McKenzie, is available now in a DVD collection. Well, tomorrow night, after more than 25 years on the air, there's a poignant end in store for the bill, but not everyone is feeling sentimental in the last ever episode, tomorrow at 9.